Welcome to the Irishman, Englishman and Scotsman football podcast. How good was Paul McGrath? As good a player as I played with. Uh, absolutely. Yes. I mean, they used to refer to him as God and I wouldn't dispute that. Um, and and a, ph a phenomenal athlete. Um, but uh, as good a centre back that I've ever played with anywhere, and, and let's not forget, I've played with the likes of Marcel Bissay, uh, William Gallas, uh, John Terry, um, Yap Stam, Henning Berg, you know, even back to Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister, you know, so, some absolutely outstanding centre backs uh, in my time. And um, and for me, he, you know, he he was the, he was the best. No disrespect to anyone else. And uh, and like I said, his his athletic ability, you know, and the the way he judged a high ball, um, which is often overlooked, his pace, which is often overlooked, uh, his ability on the ball, you know, one of the great skills that this, you don't find as much these days is that that little I call it the you know, the late Bobby Moore, his ball, the Bobby Moore ball, when they just clip it in to the striker so they can you know bring it on their chest or whatever. He was fantastic at that, and and to boot with that, he was a fantastic man. A real colossus, a real influence, quiet, um, but so powerful. He's the type of person that could sit in a room, he wouldn't say a word, but you could feel him. You, you could really feel him. He had, he had a superb energy about him. I uh, couldn't speak too highly, more highly of him than that. Yeah, I mean, he's God to us in, in, in Ireland as well, you know, mm. and uh, there are the, the stories about him having, you know, not only train one day a week because of his knee, but then yeah. play out of his skin on, on the weekend. Is that true? Yeah, th that is true. I, I, yeah, I would say he would, it, he wouldn't just train one day a week, but uh, Jim Walker, who was our physiotherapist, who'd done a marvellous job with him, he extended his career, I would say, about at least four or five years, uh, had a system with him. You know, the, he would be in the gym, and he'd be working in the gym and so forth, um, but a lot of times he'd only come out one or two days a week on the actual park, and it proved a lot to me that, you know, you can actually do that if you if you know, if you you know have to. Um, uh, but I think a lot of it was down to the athletic ability that Paul had. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he, he would come out, like I said, Thursday or Friday, um, the rest of the time he wouldn't just do nothing. He'd be working in the gym. There's no doubt about that, but his knees needed protecting. Um, but it was worth it because he was an absolutely fantastic player. Like I said, an exceptional player. And I always remember one story that Andy T Towns and then Ray Houghton used to tell us, uh, Ray Houghton was there originally and, uh, with Ron Atkinson. He was another, you know, fantastic player and a great person to listen to that in 1988 uh, at the Euros, you know, when they played against Holland in that in that amazing game where if they all they needed was a point to go through to the to the semifinals and then the, the Holland scored in the last couple of minutes that after, at the end of the game, Frank Reichardt and Rude Hullet were waiting outside the dressing room to change their jerseys and, and apparently like the, the Irish players were like, you know, do you want to change me? I said, no, no, we're waiting for Paul McGrath. So there you go. I think that tells the story. I think that tells oh, the story in itself. Yeah. Brilliant, man. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, that game goes down in Irish history. Uh, that, that, oh, yeah. You know, the game against England, but the Dutch game, I think oh, it was Wim Keats yeah, got the goal. That, that, yeah. That, that Irish game, I mean, that, that was so close. But listen, they, they, they in the end, no, nobody expected them to, to do what they do. And they really, they, they'd won their cup, cup by beating England originally. But 100%. Only couple, 100%. And in the end, they got knocked out by the, by the team who won it. So no shame in that. Yeah, it's all about getting there for us. You know, I've been to, you know, obviously 88, I was, I was too young and, and 02 as well, but yeah. I've been to the Euros in, in 2012 and 2016 and they're, they're a yeah. party like no other if you're an Irish oh, fan. Yeah. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to hear more of our podcasts, please click on the red subscribe button on the bottom right-hand side. Thank you.